Hi, I'm Mark from Meetings Club, trusted online reviews for conference meeting and event organisers. Welcome along to the Meetings Club channel. Now, I'm delighted to be joined by Matthew Want, who's the executive assistant to Lucy Brazier, who is, of course, the editor of the internationally renowned executive secretary and CEO of Marshall Publishing. Hi, Matthew. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Mark. It's uh, a really great pleasure to be part of this. Really appreciate your time. Now, I've got to kick off by saying you should have the hardest job in the world. You're an executive assistant to somebody who knows absolutely everything there is to know about the world of EAs, PAs and aspiring administrative professionals. How do you cope with the pressure? Um, it is really tough. It's, I think it's a lot of uh, trust and teamwork between myself and Lucy. I think that's key and crucial wherever she may be in the world. I think over the years, I've been working for Lucy six years now, uh, sorry, seven years now. So over those seven years, we've really built up a relationship. We know what is important and what isn't. And that helps us to streamline what needs to do in straight away. And it, it, with the amount of traveling Lucy does, she did 40 countries last year. And it's time zones from an hour up to, I think the longest was Papua New Guinea, which was 13, 14 hours. So you're literally at the opposite end of the day. And it could be really tough to streamline in and knowing what is important, what you can leave is, it is key and crucial, I find, to making sure it runs as smoothly as possible. How did you first actually get into this role? So before I worked uh, with Lucy, I did something completely different. I worked in a garden centre. So, yeah, something completely different. I had uh, no experience in uh, administrative tasks or anything like that. I'd always wanted to get into events. And where I used to live, there wasn't a great opportunity for you to do it. Um, I did a few. I, I did uh, my own fundraising things before I had for cancer research and things like that. And I think all in all, I did a couple of events, raised about £10,000. So I had the events experience in my belt. Um, about a couple of years in of doing the fundraising, I met Lucy. Um, I worked in my dad's taxi office um, part time as well as working at the garden centre. So I met Lucy and she came in one night and she said, hey, um, I've heard about because funnily enough, she used to know my dad before um, she met me. So she said, oh, I hear you want to get into events. Da, 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 da. And I, I, I went away thinking, I don't know who this lady is, but she said she can get to me into events. So let's see what happens. Um, a couple of weeks later we met on our local chamber of commerce and as we went forward with that we planned a big christmas event which was around it went from about 100 people to about 8,000 people in the first year so we really rejuvenated that and filled up the whole high street um it was such a great event it was under a tree which is a couple of stories tall they called it big tree night and after that lucy had the magazine for about a year as it is now and she said look i'm looking for someone part-time would you like to be involved and i jumped into the opportunity and here I am now. Well, I mean, great, great story. <laughs> but I'm interested because EAs and PAs, I mean, often seen historically, I would guess, as a career for women. So, so what did your friends and family think when you decided to go down this particular career path? There's a really interesting story when it comes to that. And you might have heard it already, Mark, but um, before the First World War, it was predominantly men who were doing the administrative tasks that the women are doing now. But obviously when war hit, the men went out to fight and the women came in and took over the role. And since then, it's become predominantly women and men haven't really started to come back in it. It's still a female dominated industry. I think something over the years, it will progress for more men coming in. I mean, I know some great men that are in the industry, absolute leaders within the industry as well. Um, I think when I first started, my friends, that when I said I was going to be an assistant, personal assistant, they said, oh, so you're going to be doing teen typing. And I looked at them and I was like, no, it's going to be a lot more than that. And then when I started going through what I do, they said to me, wow, you've got a really good job. And I was like, yeah, it's not just teen typing. There's a lot more to it. You're an executive assistant. What's the actual difference then, do you believe, between an EA and a PA? I would say a PA can sometimes be more reactive than proactive. I think a PA is there to do certain things such as... It depends, it depends on the job role and obviously what the company is. Um, some PAs are there just to do diary management and things like that. Um, I know a few PAs who are, as I said, just focused on diary management. I feel for me personally, and it's maybe because we work in a smaller company, um, 
with me and Lucy, I think being the EA is more of a strategic business partner than just doing the diary management. You know, I, I know what Lucy wants three steps ahead. It's not just looking, thinking, right, I need to get that done. It's now, right, if I get that done, I can get that done and that done and that done. And then Lucy won't have to think about it. So it's, it's knowing how your boss thinks and thinking ahead to save them time. Um, saving your boss time, it's not just the time you're saving them, it's the time you're saving the company. And when you look at the time you're saving, as the old saying is, time is money. So when you're saving people time, you are saving yourself, your boss and the company money. You're saving a lot of time, but you must also face um, a lot of challenges. I mean, you organize, we were talking about sort of international conferences and events, that can be stressful. You must have many, many challenges. Definitely, I think it's it's a really tough one, especially um, we've got our Executive Secretary Live London event next uh, Friday and Saturday. And that's luckily that's not too bad because obviously we're, we're based in the UK, so the time zone is on a par. But we also literally we finished our London one and then we have one in Sydney and Wellington back to back. And we also have our USA running uh, event running and then we will have one in Johannesburg. So when they're running along each other, we're literally on a 24 hour clock. You know, London finishes and then the States wakes up. You do the States and then when we're asleep, you've got Australia and New Zealand who are awake. And by the time they go to sleep, we're starting up again. So it's, it's a 24 hour clock, it is really tough. And especially trying to connect with people on the far side of the world, New Zealand and Australia in particular with the time differences, it can be really tough at times. Time is important. Is that one of the key strengths of a good EA? Definitely, I think being a, a timekeeper is a formidable thing that any PA EA should have. I think it's something that is essential to the role. You know, if, if you don't know what time your boss has or how to manage their time in the most effective way, then you, as such, you're not doing the role to the best of your ability. You know, if your manager is not getting through what they need to get through, and I understand managers sometimes go about their own way and they do things without consulting their assistant, which can happen in all companies i understand that but making sure that your boss has what they need is i mean for for example uh, i know you said you saw lucy at the pa show and she uh, spoke about how we work together one thing i do is if there's some big deadline coming up or something like that or if there's emails that lucy needs to see i ensure that it's put into her calendar i book time out so it's there so she can sit there for maybe an hour two hours however however long i think it might take um that way she can get it done without any other distractions, without anything else going on at that time. She can purely focus on that and then move on to the next task. Now, as a child, you overcame some real adversity. Um, yeah. Two liver transplants, quite amazing. What has that taught you that you've been able to sort of take into your working career? I think it's not to take everything as an advantage. I think, um, touch wood, I'm very lucky and there's not many other people that I've met for the same reason that I had, that they've had two liver transplants. I was unfortunately born with an illness called biliatresia. Um, and I had my first liver transplant when I was about one. And unfortunately that didn't uh, take to my body. So I had the second one when I was about three. And since then, again, touch wood, I've been absolutely fine, but it's really taught me that be lucky for what you have. And it may not necessarily tie in with the role, but it's taught me not to take advantage of what you have as well. I, I think it's essential and key that you make the most of what you've got and help others as well. You know, you never know when you might need help. And that really does really motivate you. Definitely. And I think it's a key skill that a lot of assistants have is the caring nature. You look at other female dominated industries, you've got, um, for example, let's name one, uh, nurseries, babysitters, things like that are predominantly women and they all have the same tendencies as the assistant role, caring, loyal, trustworthy. You know, assistants don't just have high IQ, they have high EQ as well. We as assistants need to know how to adapt at the click of a finger, especially with the how the role is nowadays. It's changing daily. It's not just a nine to five as it used to be. It's as I said before, it can be a 24-7, especially when you're dealing with the world with a phone at your fingertips pretty much 24-7. Now with Wi-Fi on flights and trains, it's everywhere. There's no way you can just finish work and say, right, I'll be back in the morning sometimes. 
it's it's at your fingertips 24 7 and it's learning to adapt to that with your role but it, but it's not <laughs> oh no definitely i think a healthy work-life balance is essential as well i think you need to have that um i've met assistants who haven't done the work-life balance and i went through a phase of that before i met my uh my wife uh before we met six years ago and i was doing a lot of work i think i was probably doing about 90 hours a week i was working about three jobs and um to some i know that's not a big working week but to me at the time i was 22 and it was a lot and i didn't realize until i met her name's kaylee i met kaylee and i thought wow there is more to life and it just as you no, as everybody knows, life just flashes before your eyes, so you just need to make the most of it. You need to learn to balance out. And if it means sitting down and speaking with your boss saying, look, I'm happy to look at emails at a certain time in the evening. Uh, there's a gentleman in South Africa, Sherwin Weber, who he said that his boss was expecting him to work all evening and he has two kids. And he sat down with his boss and he said, look, I'm happy to do some work for you in the evening but I'm going to put my kids to bed first so I can spend time with them because I don't want to miss them growing up. And his boss was completely understanding. And it just goes to show that if you sit down with your boss and say it in the right way, explain the situation, they should understand in that you shouldn't need to be on call 24 seven. Good advice. Thank, thanks very much indeed for that. And I know your time is very, very precious and you've got to organise a, a, a major conference next week. But just before we, we finish, Matt, what top tips would you give any aspiring EA or EA? Yeah, I would say be yourself. I think that's key with any role. Um, trust, again, is a big one. If you don't have the trust with your executive, or your manager it won't work you need to have that trust and that loyalty there and um, it may just be that when you start off you set boundaries with each other um, as I mentioned before sitting down with your boss and saying look I'm happy to work in the evenings I'm happy to do this but having that level of trust I work from home probably about 90 95 percent of the time and that wouldn't work with me unless you didn't have the trust knowing that I was working so trust is something having, having the key skills, trust, loyalty, and um, efficiency, that I think they're three of the key skills that any assistant should have and does have. That's why you're in this role. You're busy as always. We're really grateful here at Meetings Club for your time, Matt. Um, thank you very, very much indeed for that. An absolute pleasure. Thank you so much again for having me. And if you want to find out more about Executive Secretary and their great events and training programs, please go to executivesecretary.com.